Want to supercharge your workflow in Logic Pro? By the end of this video, you'll know the 39 essential key commands for lightning fast Logic Pro mixing. Let's get started. Hello everybody, Dylan Pines here with another mixing tutorial for you. Today we're going to be talking about Logic Pro key commands. It's no secret that the secret to a faster workflow is knowing as many keyboard shortcuts as you can. If you're doing everything with your mouse, ultimately, you're going to be slow, slow, slow. There are tons of different ways to automate what you're probably doing by hand. We're gonna be going through 39 of them in this video. Since there's so many, I'm gonna be doing this a little rapid fire. And a quick disclaimer, a few of these might seem kind of basic to you intermediate users, but that doesn't make them any less important. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's actually start with the basics. These are some key commands that you might already know, but you absolutely need to master. First up, batch rename. This one makes starting out your sessions way easier. If you're trying to go through and rename all of these tracks, just double click on one, name it, male vocals, and then hit tab. And then you can just keep on going. Female vocals, hit tab, acoustic guitar, hit tab, and so on. It makes it a lot easier to rename everything super fast rather than having to click, rename, click off, click, rename, click off, and so on. Next up, we've got solo. Now this one, like a lot of the more basic Logic Pro key commands, is just a letter. It's just the S key, that's it. So you can see if you hit S, that gets soloed. If you hit S, that gets soloed. If you hit it again, it gets unsoloed. Simple as that. Makes it a lot easier than having to go over with your mouse, find the solo button, and click it. Next up is mute. Same thing as solo, it's just the M key. This one is super easy because you can just go through and mute several things in a row without ever having to use your actual clicker. And if you can combine it with the arrow keys, which allows you to go up and down, you can very quickly mute several tracks in a row. Next up, we've got select all. Now this is something that you see in a lot of different programs, but it's super helpful in something like this, especially when you have a very large session. And that is command A. That just selects all of the tracks, all the regions. If you have to do any sort of moving, if you have to do any sort of batch processing, that makes it Super easy to get everything in one go. After that, let's talk about highlighting different sections. So if I was trying to highlight different tracks, all I would want to do is hold down shift and then click. And you could see I was able to grab all of these different tracks. If I hold down shift and click lower, I get to add these tracks to what's been, what's been selected. And then for regions, all I want to do is click and drag. And you can see that I've got a little box that I create and as long as I'm holding down the mouse, I can select whatever regions I need. Next up is record. And this might be the key command that I use the most, especially during songwriting, because I'm always wanting to go on the fly. I'm never wanting to move my mouse to find the record button. It's super simple. All you have to do is hit R and any kind of record enabled track is gonna start recording immediately. You can see I just hit the R key and all of a sudden I'm getting sound. Makes it really, really easy. Speaking of recording, after that, we've got turning on the click track. Now, all you have to do to do that is hit the K button. That's going to enable it and turn it off. Next up is something that's super great for organization, and that is opening up the color palette. If I wanted to recolor any of these tracks, all I'd need to do is click on it and hit option C. And now my color palette is open and I can select any color I want. The nice thing, so I can select multiple regions and make them all the exact same color. And then just X out of it or hit option C again and it's gone. And here's an extra little tip. If you want your tracks over here to be the same color, just highlight all of them, go up to functions and hit color track by region color. And now all of a sudden, the entire track is the exact color that you want. Finally, for the basics, we've got zooming in and out. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Logic Pro gives you tons of options. So ultimately, it just comes down to your specific preference. So for me, there's two different ways that I like to do it. One is holding down Command and hitting either the up or down arrow or the left and right arrow. This is a way to predictably zoom in and out your session 
And if I'm not really thinking, this is the way I like to go, especially if I'm trying to get really, really specific on one part. The other thing I like to do, and this is really something you can only do with specific mouses that have left and right scrolls and up and down scrolls. But if you hold down option and then scroll around, you can resize any way you want. It's really, really helpful. And as long as I have my mouse hovering over where I want to size in, it's going to pretty roughly stick around where I want to go. It's not quite as accurate as just going left, right, up, and down while holding command, but it's a nice, easy, quick way to get the results that I'm looking for. All right, so next, let's move on to the heavy lifters. These are some key commands that might be new to you, you might not know them, but you're gonna use them constantly throughout your sessions once you do. So the first one is something I'm surprised more people don't know about, and that is the marquee tool. This is something that, man, every time I show a student this, it blows their mind, and it blew my mind the first time I started using it too. If you hold down command and then click and drag on a region, you can see it highlights a very specific part of the region. And if I click it, boom, I now have a brand new region that I can do anything that I want with. And not only that, but it also works in automation. So if I wanted to automate just this specific part, hold down command, drag the selection I want, click it, and now I have a little block of volume that I can do whatever I want with. It makes automation super fast and it makes doing my editing super fast as well. Now, if I only wanted to split a region in half, then I'm gonna be using my next key command, and that is split region by playhead. And that's just command T. So you can see, if I move around, every time I hit command T, I'm gonna get a brand new region that I can mess with. So this is just another way to be able to split your regions up quickly. You can either use the marquee tool or you can use split by playhead. All right, after that, we've got a few movement key commands, specifically ones that allow you to move the playhead left and right. So it's super easy. All you have to do is hit either the comma to move left one bar, which I'll zoom in here so you can see it, or hit the period to move right one bar. It makes it really, really easy to move around the session without having to go around, find exactly where you wanna go, click, and then just really hope that it snaps to the grid. So let's say you wanna move more than one bar. Maybe you wanna move eight bars so you can quickly move around your session. You're gonna be hitting the same buttons. You're just gonna be holding shift at the same time. Just like that. Makes it really easy to quickly, quickly move through a session, especially if it's really long. Now the easy way to remember that is if you look down at your keyboard, you're going to see that the comma and the period buttons also have the less than and greater than signs, kind of like a left and a right arrow. That's the little memory trick that I've used to make sure that I know exactly where this key command is. All right, after that, we've got a key command that I use all the time, and that is just turning off and on a loop. So in Logic Pro, you've got these little bars right here that allow you to loop a specific part over and over and over again. Now, if I wanted to turn that off, all I would have to do is hit C. If I wanted to turn it on, hit C again. It makes it really, really easy, again, because you don't have to go up here and actually click on the loop. All you gotta do is hit C, and you can just move around, hit C, and it'll start you right where you need to be. Now, the reason it's C in Logic Pro is because it actually calls its loops cycles. So C for cycle instead of L for loop. So next up is a personal favorite of mine, and that is hiding tracks. So in order to keep your session organized, you're probably not going to want every single track to be visible. You're probably gonna to wanna to have some tracks turned off and hidden, especially if they were ones maybe that you used for editing, or maybe they were just ideas that you had that you wanna be able to access for later, so you don't want to delete them. All you wanna do is hit H on your keyboard, and then you're gonna see this little H button pop up. Now, let's say, um, let's say I don't really want to keep any of these final few tracks. Well, all I'd wanna do is click on the H and then drag down. And then if I hit H again on my keyboard, boom, they're gone, but they're still there. If I hit H again, they show up. If I hit H again, they're gone. And if I want to get rid of them, again, just click, hold, and drag, and these tracks come right back, nice and easy. Okay, these next few key commands are gonna keep you from having to deal with this annoying mixer, this tiny little mixer window that pops up down at the bottom. I 
really hate this thing. I love Logic Pro, but dealing with this mixer has always been extremely annoying to me. So the next few key commands are all about getting a better view of the mixer, the arrangement window, even the piano roll. So first up, let's talk about showing the mix window. All you need to do is hold down command and hit two. And you can see a full screen mix window pops right up. Now, let's say I wanted to see the arrangement window, the window I was just on. Well, then you're gonna hit command one, okay? And then let's say I wanted to see the piano roll. You know, I wanted to edit some MIDI notes. That's gonna be command four. Usually these three windows are the windows that I have open all the time. And I'm just cycling in between them, just depending on what I need in the moment. Now, how do you cycle between the open windows? Well, you can either just hit command one, command two, or command four, but sometimes logic will interpret that as opening up a brand new window and it will open up two arrangement windows or two mixer windows. So what I like to do is to actually use command tilde and that just cycles in between all open windows that you have for a certain program. This actually is not a Logic Pro key command. This is a Mac key command. So this is a great tip if you have maybe uh, two or three different uh, you know, internet windows open and you wanted to cycle in between them, command tilde, it's gonna work for that too. Or maybe you had two or three different Word uh, documents open and you wanted to cycle between them quickly, command tilde, it's gonna do that too. So between command one, two, and four, and command tilde, that's pretty much how I do all of my switching when I'm actually doing my mixing. So the final key command in this section is to solo only one track at a time and that is holding down option and clicking on one of the S buttons. Now, you might say that that doesn't actually make anything faster. You know, you're still going and clicking on S buttons. Why would I want to do that? Well, the cool thing is if I go and click on S buttons right now, it's just soloing and unsoloing whatever I click on. But let's say I wanted to listen to one part and then I wanted to listen to another part, back and forth, maybe to compare them. Well, if I held down option, check out what happens. All the solos go away and only one specific track gets soloed. But let's say I wanted to listen to the bass. If I hold down option and click, now only that is soloed. It takes away all of these different solos and gets rid of all of them just for the one that you just clicked on. It's super helpful, especially when you're doing editing or if you're doing some really nitty gritty mixing work, it speeds up your workflow like crazy. Okay, so now I wanna to talk to you about automation. Opening up automation the old fashioned way means going up here, clicking on this button, and then you, know, you have access to whatever automation you need. But for me, I like hitting A instead. Super easy, super simple. It's another one of those basic Logic Pro key commands that you should be using already. But one thing I really love with automation, one key command I love, is oftentimes I want to actually go in here and turn volume down over time. But a lot of times just the regular fade that I've just made, it doesn't really sound all that musical. And so one thing I love using is the automation curve tool. Now to access that, you're just gonna hit T, which brings up your tool, uh, your, your tool menu right here. So I'm gonna hit T and then I'm gonna hit W. Now, if you look down here, you can see that W right here is the automation curve tool. And all of these are great key commands for you to learn, but specifically, I want you to look at this one. Now check this out. Now I can move this so that it's really steep at the beginning, or I can move it to where it's really steep at the end, or maybe it's really steep at the beginning and at the end and nothing at the middle or vice versa. It allows me to make my automation way more musical, way smoother. It allows it to fit sort of the musical vibe of the arrangement rather than just being a plain Jane straight line, which honestly never happens in nature. So now let's move on and talk about the piano roll. There's a few key commands in Logic that I love using whenever I'm in the piano roll. These aren't all of the key commands that you're gonna be using if you live in here. Like if you do electronic music, there's tons and tons of key commands for the piano roll that make it work so much better. But here are a few that for me, I use almost every single time I'm writing any kind of synths 
or a piano melody or anything like that. So first off, the most basic one is going to be quantized notes. So you can see right here, I've got just a little bit of a random scale. I'll hit play right now, and you're gonna hear it's pretty out of time. So what if I wanted to put that in time? Well, all I'd have to do is select everything and hit Q on the keyboard. Well, now you can see, and unfortunately there's one that got messed up, but overall, now everything is on the grid. Everything is totally lined up with the grid. It's in time. Let's listen. You get the idea. Now, obviously, if you don't want it completely on the grid, maybe you want to uh, keep some of the, the feel of the, the original performance. Luckily, over here, there is a strength slider. So you can see the closer it goes to zero, the less quantized, the closer it goes to 100, the more quantized. So uh, I usually have mine set to kind of like 70, and then I will just grab stuff and hit Q where needed. Luckily, I'd already quantized that, but I'll set my strength where I want, then I'll select stuff and hit Q. Now, what's the next thing I'll do? Well, if I'm wanting a very smooth performance, especially if I'm doing some kind of synth where it's like monophonic and I don't want any breaks, well, I'm gonna want to remove the MIDI note overlaps. Now, there's not really a ton in here, so I'm actually gonna just make a few. Um, and that's just basically where you have two MIDI notes going at the same time, which can be honestly just very, very odd if you're doing some sort of instrument where you know that triggers something internally and makes it have either a chord or makes it flip too early. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything and I'm going to hit forward slash. And now you can see I've cut everything so that there's no overlaps happening. It makes it way, way easy to actually do that. Now let's say, great, you know, I don't have any overlaps, but I want all of my MIDI notes to connect. I don't want them to be touching each other, but I don't want there to be a break every single time one note goes to the next. So I'm going to grab everything again, and I'm gonna hit shift and then forward slash again. And that's called forcing legato. Now what that does is exactly what I said. Now every single note is pretty much exactly touching the note next to it without actually touching. So listen to it now. Piano may or may not be the best example to show you what I'm talking about, but if you use synths, you know how valuable that keystroke is. Finally, I have the two keystrokes that I use the most when I'm writing using the piano roll. So the first one is to move a note up or down a semitone, and that's just me clicking on the note and then holding down Option, then using the arrow keys up and down to move it one semitone at a time. This is really, really helpful if you're trying to get harmonies right. That's the thing I use it the most for. And then the next keystroke that I use is to allow it to go up or down an entire octave. And that's just shift and option. So it's the exact same thing. It's just you're holding down shift instead of just holding down option. And that's really great to make sure that you're getting the timbre where it needs to be, that you're getting the arrangement right. Sometimes I just like grabbing everything and shifting it down one octave just to see what it sounds like, or shifting it up one octave to see what it sounds like. And that way you don't have to select and then drag and just pray to God that you don't accidentally get it off time or off key, because that's really easy to do. All right, finally, we are to the extra stuff. These are key commands that I use all the time. You know, they may not be power lifters. I might not be using them every 10 seconds, but there's still things that speed up my workflow significantly. So here we go. First off is turning off and on groups, and that's gonna be Shift G. Now, if you don't know what groups are, basically uh, down here, there is this little uh, gray box. And if I select group, now all of these are grouped together. Now, the cool thing about that is that means if I turn this down, all of the volume faders go at the exact same rate. And there's a lot of other cool things that you can do with groups. But sometimes I wanna be able to set one volume fader by itself 
and then turn the group back on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift G and you can see that this just got grayed out. And now I can move my volume faders anywhere I want them to. If I hit Shift G again, check that out. Now they are all working in ratio with each other all over again. So next up is showing and hiding plugins. This is something that's really helpful if maybe you've got several plugins up, you're doing your mixing, you're in the thick of it, but you just realized you accidentally selected maybe the wrong region, or you need to go in and check something that's actually on the arrange window. You know, let me go in here. I've got a bunch of different ones that I can bring up. So let's say I've got all these up and I need to go and check a region about something. Well, I can go in and X out of all of them. That takes forever. Or I can hit V. All that does is show and hide the plugins. That's it. If I hit V again, there they are. If I hit V again, they're gone. Now I do still have to go in and X out of them if I truly want to get rid of them, but it's a great way to be able to go in, access the arrange window if I need to, or the, uh, or the mixing window if I need to turn up or down the volume or something, uh, and then get access back to all of my plugins. All right, the next two key commands are better ways to set your cycles. So let's say I wanted to listen to this particular acoustic guitar track over and over again. Maybe I'm doing some mixing uh, or I'm doing some editing, but I don't wanna go up and actually draw in my loop. Let me move that out of the way so I can show you what I'm talking about. Well, all I'm gonna do is hold Command and then hit U. And that basically sets my loop to the parameters of my region and it turns my loop on. It makes it really, really easy to very, very quickly set up your cycles. Now, another great keystroke for setting up your cycles is to set your cycle by your markers. So let me get up a marker real quick. So I've got one here. Let's say I've got another one here. And let's say this is my, uh, this is my verse. This is verse one, and I only wanna listen to verse one. Well, if I'm in verse one right now, and I hold down control, Option and C, all of a sudden my cycle is going to just loop where this marker is. It's only going to loop verse one. This is super, super simple and super, super helpful for really quickly getting your cycles going for specific sections. Okay, the next key command is great for editing and that is nudging left or right. So if I was wanting to go in here and I was wanting to make sure that this was as in time as possible, you know, it might be playing a little ahead of the beat or a little bit behind the beat, so I might want to nudge it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna hold down Option and then I'm gonna hit either the left arrow or the right arrow. Super simple. That's going to allow me to get it better in time. And then up here, you're gonna be able to set the nudge value to whatever you want it to be. It could be super big if you want it to go one bar at a time or it could be really small if you're just wanting to go by milliseconds at a time. This is great if you're really trying to get super specific with the timing. Now, for Logic, in order to get access to this, you do have to click this little drop down box, but honestly, I tend to do my mix with this open. So, just so you know, it's sitting right there. Another great way to move around different regions is to slide without snapping. Now, I love the grid in Logic Pro. I love that it's smart, but sometimes I'm trying to set it really close to the bar and not directly on it. And it gets really annoying when I'm trying to put it in between here and here, and it just will not let me do it. So all I have to do is click it and then hold down control. And you can see it's no longer on the grid. I can move it wherever I want. Even if I'm just wanting to move it super small, I can, it's no longer on the grid. Now be aware, you do have to click and then hit control. If you hit control first and then click it, it's just going to think that you're trying to right click because that's just how Macs usually work. Like if you don't have a mouse that can right click and if you hold down control, it'll right click for you. Um, so you want to grab it, click, and then hit control. So the next key command to me is a little bit like a magic trick, and that is to capture a MIDI recording. So let's say you are messing around on a piano. You're not recording, you know, you're just basically playing around. You know, you've hit play, maybe you're listening to stuff behind you, and you're playing something you really like. I'm gonna play something that is gonna sound probably pretty bad, but it doesn't matter. 
But let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm just like, oh yeah, these chords, they're revolutionary. They've never, no one has ever written chords like this. The Beatles ain't got nothing on me. And then you hit stop and you're like, oh no, I cannot remember what I just played. It's been lost to time. Well, guess what? If you hit shift and then R, look at what just got created down there. You've got a little region that has everything you just played in it. It's super easy. It's basically listening to everything that you're playing on your MIDI controller. And if you hit stop and you really wish that you had recorded what you just put in, you absolutely can go back in time using a time machine and create a recording. All right, now let's talk about a little duplication. If you want to duplicate a track super quickly, you know, maybe because you are recording several takes or you're writing or you just don't want to take time to create a new track, just hit Command D and then a new one is created right below. It does not bring the region with you. It just creates an exact copy of this channel and the channel strip. It's really, really simple if you want to get the exact settings of the channel strip that you just had before. Honestly, I use this all the time. I use this more than I even use just creating new tracks. It's a bit of a bad habit because sometimes I have to go in here and uh, turn a bunch of stuff off. So try not to overuse it, but I love it. I love it so much. It saves so much time. And then if you want to duplicate a region, just click, hit option, and drag. And you can see now I've got a brand new copy of this region. I can put it anywhere I want in the session. And just whenever I let go of my cursor, boop, there it is, nice and easy. And if I wanna put it down here, there we go. Okay, here's a cool tip. What if you have several regions in a row like this? And maybe you think this one sounds great and this one sounds great, but this one you're wanting to take out of the arrangement. Maybe it's just not fitting in the song, but you don't really want to delete it. You know, you might end up deciding you want to keep it later. Well, there is a way to mute only that region and that is clicking on it, hitting control and then hitting M. And now you can see that only this region is muted. There's no regions beside it that are muted as well. And if I want to unmute it, control M, and there we go. Now, the cool thing about this, if I go to my piano roll, this works on piano notes too. If I hit control M, that's going to mute it. I hit control M, that's going to mute it. If I want to mute this entire section, control M, boom. And now if I hit play, can't hear those notes at all. A really, really useful key command for very quickly getting better arrangements. All right, we are almost at the end, so let's talk about a very important one, and that is bounce in place. It's something that a lot of new Logic Pro users and even intermediate Logic Pro users don't really know what it does, and they don't really like to use it. I use it so much. I love baking in effects partially just because it helps with CPU and partially because, you know, it keeps me from having to make tons and tons of decisions and then feeling the need to go back and redo those decisions. Like it makes my decisions permanent so I can focus on whatever I'm wanting to focus on in the moment. So if I wanted to, let's say, you know, let's say I, uh, I had some Melodyne on here. I'm not actually going to do it. Uh, and I had some, some compression on here and I wanted to bake that in, well, all I'd want to do is make sure that I had this track selected, and then I would hit Control B. And if I do that, this little bounce regions in place thing comes up. I want to make sure bypass effect plugins is uh, definitely unchecked for this. Uh, I don't want to include any volume or pan automation, and I'm going to hit OK. And now I've got a brand new audio track that's got a little bit of Melodyne on it and a little bit of compression baked in. It's great if you do a whole bunch of editing and you want to make sure that all of those edits don't get lost over time. Now, another great thing is let's say that you have a little track stack. Let me make one right here. And, you know, I've got a compressor on my track stack. We'll just leave it at that for now. But let's say I wanted to turn this track stack into one track. I wanted to basically just turn it into a single region so that I could get rid of all of this stuff underneath it. Well, all I'd have to do is hit Control and then Command and then B. And that is bouncing a track in place instead of bouncing a region in place. So I'm hit OK. 
So now you can see I've got a brand new audio file and it is all of these things put together on one track. This really is a game changer if you're trying to take like 150 tracks from your session and turn them into 20. You know, if you are trying to really focus in on working on specific buses, this is a great way to do it. So speaking of track stacks, which are incidentally my favorite organization thing in Logic, here is your final tip. A lot of people really like the idea of track stacks, you know, because they allow you to actually organize your session in a way where you can minimize everything and it's not quite so stressful to look at. But they don't like, you know, making 15 or 20 and having to go in and individually open all of these tracks. It's just a hassle. There is actually a key command that will do it for you, but it's custom. It's not something that you actually have stock with Logic. So all you have to do is go up to Logic Pro, you're gonna to go to key commands and then edit. And then if you type in close, you're going to see open close track stack. And for me, I put in shift command F. I honestly don't remember why I did that, um, but I've pretty much memorized it at this point. So if you put that in and you hit learn, guess what I can do with shift command F. Now I can go in and I can very quickly open these up look at their insides, fiddle with stuff, and then shut them down. And the cool thing too is if I select all of them, I can open up all of them and I can minimize all of them. Super easy, super fast. I mean, I might have saved an hour in my mixes whenever I learned how to do this because I love using track stacks to organize and so I would just have tons of track stacks and I hated having to go in and individually open and close every single one. So that for me is a huge game changer of a key command. But if you don't use track stacks, well, you should start using track stacks. That's gonna be my little PSA of this. Use track stacks, they're great. I love them so much. So there you go, 39 essential Logic Pro key commands. If you're able to memorize all of these, I mean, you are going to speed up your workflow like crazy. I know that it sped up my workflow by learning all these over the last several years, so I can guarantee it's gonna help you out as well. But here is the thing, getting a faster workflow is just one small piece of the puzzle. If you're trying to get songs and mixes that are ready for the public, you gotta learn more. You can still get this perfect and still end up with an amateur sound if you're making mistakes in other areas. So that said, that's why Rob Mazes, you know, the founder of Musician, you see him on all the videos half the time. He put together a free workshop where he shares the seven steps to making radio ready music at home. You know, he's created a new approach to home recording and mixing that's going to help you do all this stuff so much faster and so much better. And honestly, it hasn't just worked for him. Over 36,000 people have already been through this workshop and they've seen results in their music in just a few days. So if this is something that you're interested in, it's your turn. If you wanna learn the exact seven steps that will take your mixes to a professional standard in under a year and keep you from wasting precious time and money and effort on the wrong things, then go and watch the free workshop now. Just click the link on screen or in the description below to get your own access. It's completely free and trust me, you're gonna love it. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We make tutorials and tips just like this one every week on this channel. We'd love to help you grow. Well, that's gonna be it from me. This has been Dylan Pines with Musician on a Mission. And remember, create regardless. Mm -hmm.